Hey, I'm Andy, and welcome to Rock, Roll, and Red Plaid. in progress okay <laughs> yes i guess that's that's the name of it uh mm-hmm. is the red is the red light on is salem massachusetts going to enter into immortality <laughs> uh that's a good question we'll see <laughs> we shall see we are here with the one and only dan kupka is that how you pronounce your last name just making sure um, i pronounce it with more of like a coop sound like chicken coop oh. kupka but <laughs> kupka, i mean okay whatever just checking because i, uh, I mean, you can call sure. me whatever you want as long as it's not late for dinner <laughs> and for those of you who are wondering uh, who is this gentleman this this is one of the most interesting musical minds that i've met in a very long oh, time and i mean that for a fact i'm not just being a host here <laughs> you have a uh, a very insightful mind for um all things music production and uh and uh synth i guess you could say what is uh your what I hate to ask, what is your forte? Because how long have I known you at this point? No worries. Well, um, I guess as it applies to other areas in life, but with respect to music, in this case, you could say, uh, was it uh, Jack of all trades, master of none? Um, I I do a little bit of several different things, if not everything. Uh, but yes, I I um, I grew up playing classical music. Mi- uh, class, Western classical piano, um, and I graduated or kind of sidelined over into uh, playing synthesizer keyboards and getting into synth modules, just like boxes you hook up to a keyboard that you can play or connect to a computer and do what is called computer sequencing. And then when computers got powerful enough, using synthesizers and recording uh, programs and whatnot inside the computer uh, using something called uh, Digital Audio Workstation or DAW. Say you might be familiar with Logic Pro or uh, yep. Pro Tools and other things like that. Yep. Or GarageBand for folks who like to use the uh, base Apple software that usually comes with it. I mean the 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 way GarageBand is doing these days, it's so mm-hmm. um, there's so much more advanced to it than it was years ago. There's so much more that sure. you can do with it now. It's basically like a almost like a Logic Light, you know. Mm-hmm. Almost, I guess you could say. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's not that's not unreasonable. Um, there's also uh, low cost or very well, very low cost or free options. There's stuff like Reaper. Uh, you've got um, Surge XT for software synthesizers. It's free to download and free to modify. It's open source, in other words. Um, and then there are pay for applications apart from the hardware synths. You've got your software synths and software emulations of hardware synths, which are, trust me, a lot more convenient for my back and my wallet. <laughs> but um, yes. You've seen me at open mic um, where I have various little gadgets connected to the computer and I'm maybe yeah. playing a keyboard or tapping away at a grid controller, so-called yeah. like a square of squares, if you will. Is there, the, have you ever used, uh, let's see, we have already five minutes in, we have do- dove right off into the rabbit hole of music, D- DAWs of and synths. And lots of tangents, <laughs> lots of this is here. Strap in, folks. It's going to be one of those episodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but um, maybe uh, going back for a second. Um, sure. Um, your background right in uh, in classical piano. When did that? Was that starting mm-hmm. at a young age? Or was that you? Uh, there you go. go ahead. Yes, that would started. Uh, that's that would start. That started at a young age. Um, so, quick little story of. As I recall, my mother telling me uh, at the time when I was older that my sister was playing uh, London Bridge is Falling Down on one hand on the piano in the house, and she was reading off the uh, piano book that was sitting on the 
on the slot there on the piano. I was watching her hand and playing, an, say, an octave or two higher, mm-hmm. matching what she was doing. And lo and behold, oh, Dan gets piano lessons. I mean, my <laughs> sister did as well, but sure. be sure. that as it may. Um, as I was around hitting around the age of nine or so, I started taking piano lessons until I basically graduated high school with the same piano teacher for nine years. Uh, For those who might be listening in to this, um, I know it's not live, but uh, for those who might be listening in, uh, Mrs. Phoebe Yasa was our piano teacher. Uh, Love her or hate her, I appreciated her, you know, for what uh, she taught me and other things not music related that she taught me that I didn't quite absorb until or appreciate until my later years. Mm. Um, that being said, classical piano with her. Um, and not to toot my own horn, really, because it's just stuff on the wall. But I had a lot of uh, piano guild awards uh, playing various pieces, not in terms of like a competition against anyone else as far as i understood it anyway it was more of a you know here here's the bar you have to pass uh at a minimum to be able to get these either national awards or international awards as they would state on the uh, awards like a showcase or not a kind of for for like the guild association the piano guild association gotcha And so a piano guild association member teacher would um, sit in a room and hear you play the pieces and things that you selected to attain whichever award you were trying to aspire to. And I am saying this matter of factly, not because I think it's great or bad or anything in between. It's just a simple fact that eight of those nine years that I participated in the guild I got the international award. Um, hey. And the ninth, the ninth year I slacked off and just did the <laughs> national. Um, was that your senior year? That was my senior year. <laughs> literally and figuratively <laughs> of uh, high school as well as, uh, you know. Somehow I knew. I don't know. Why. It's in- the intuitive kind of like, ah, we're over this. <laughs> of course. But I, I take I take some of what I've learned both musically and outside of that. Um just in terms of practice and effort. And I need to put a lot more practice and effort into doing that because I am admittedly very rusty these days compared to how I was. Um, But I appreciate the learning learning experience from that, uh, from taking those lessons and from doing the guild. Also roughly in my senior year of high school, that's when I kind of laterally moved into doing computer sequencing with a what would be considered extraordinarily underpowered computer by current specifications um i could rattle them off if you like your choice your choice okay so the computer in question uh that i used at the time to do that um actually scratch that let's go back to junior high school we had an Apple II GS, oh. which was a computer that did not have internal storage. It, uh, at least not by default, you booted it with a system disk of like a three and a half inch floppy disk. And then yeah, the you... external hard drives. Yes. Yeah. The external floppy drives in this case. Yes. <laughs> and then you'd have, you'd have a secondary uh, floppy uh, disk drive if you were a bit more loaded. Uh, or otherwise you'd sw- swap the discs out right. but then you'd put in your secondary disc your program disc which in oh, this wow. case for that computer was music studio 2.0 and that's where i first learned and dipped my toes into the world of music sequencing which amounted to basically um clicking in notes into a musical staff and you do that enough times over and over with various other instrument tracks in that project and you get a song of sorts or it might come out complete rubbish but you have a sequence that uh, uh, has your name on it more or less 
Um, fast forward to 1996, and I actually performed in a band doing the pretty much the same thing, but with a PC, an NEC Pyromate 466, with a 486 DX processor um, that ran at 33 megahertz. And with four megabytes of RAM initially upgraded to a whopping eight megabytes, not gigabytes, but megabytes of uh, memory and a 240 megabyte hard disk drive with an external CD-ROM drive. So all of this in a big beige box and an external CD drive that was just about as big as my MacBook Pro uh, today. And uh, it's amazing how these things change. It's like just the space wise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh no, please. No, I was, um, I was just, it, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say uh, how like back then it was like what eight up uploaded upgraded to what eight eight megabytes of space. Yes. Versus today this is mm -hmm. what 256 gigs yes this yeah. unbelievable we're talking about a thousand times the storage of the internal drive of that machine yeah yeah that so technology space. miniaturization comes a long way and the various ways to squeeze as much data data into a small space as possible um and just the pro raw processing power of systems we have today and what we can do with those systems um and here i am along in 1996 you know barely getting out of out of high school and uh um just trucking along with you know telling an external synthesizer to play some notes and now we can do all sorts of internal audio signal processing sound generation and whatnot in something that i can carry under my arm and this is the, this is actually the the part of the the conversation of here that I'm absolutely loving is that sure and what I'm gathering from this is is that the, this day and age is just so easy to create music mm -hmm. any or any multimedia on on digital platforms because it is literally right here yes I mean, look at what uh, we're doing right now this conversation I mean, right now would barely if at all be possible in that window during my high school years no, no, i eventually not even you know yeah only in um, like back to the future sequels mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah. right i mean you might yeah. be able to maybe download a by today's standards very poor quality video of a brief spoken conversation that might be a couple of minutes long right and that might take several minutes to download because the internet speeds at the time were a fraction of what they are now. And so, the, uh, yeah. and the, especially the recording and mixing and mastering of everything uh, mm -hmm. is really and then just, uploading that to some place to store for public consumption. You could in theory, and just think about this, you could in mm -hmm. theory, and we've probably done this, you and I both exclusively mm -hmm. recorded and written, wrote and recorded a song in a day mm -hmm. and then the same day have it up online for everybody to see hey here's my song i did today whereas back in that era of my high school let's say even mm -hmm. uh unless you had the means to acquire a fancy studio sound recording setup which would have you been would have to crazy money studio space crazy to, money yeah, yeah be able to mix master engineer and yeah. have all the equipment to do that yeah. The tape alone, mm -hmm. <laughs> the real, yeah, real digital tape, storage you know? was not digital storage was not uh, sufficient at the time. And you think of how, and then this is again, this is part of the the conversations that I'm really, really loving is that you think of these legendary uh, acts. Uh, think of yes. think of think of Queen and how they did all these truly unreal. At the time, it probably sounded like NASA, you know, like these, mm -hmm. like think of just Bohemian Rhapsody alone, all those crazy dubs and pans and spreads mm -hmm. and even the music video for it, too. They had these sure. like kaleidoscope lenses and stuff that they're just trying mm -hmm. stuff out with. Right. And nobody heard had... stuff like that before. But now any kid with a laptop can do stuff like that. 
you know mm -hmm. not to the greatest quality but not like that but <laughs> but even the fact that it's so much easier to approach those types of uh musical aspirations or video aspirations we have algorithms and software modules and plugins and things that make it that much quicker and easier and more accessible the funny thing the other side of that coin is that there is so much out there uh, in terms of audio and video generation that you have to find some limitations in the creation process of whatever it is because at least for me it can get overwhelming to try to figure out what to do first with when you have access to so many different uh, uh, software synthesizers and effects and hardware synthesizers if you have the space and uh, um, but especially in the software realm it's just oh there's an app for that but then you wind up with a thousand different apps that can do more or less the same thing in different ways and then you try have to narrow it down to the uh, best or most interesting tool for the job so i think going back to your queen example they had a bunch of limitations that they were trying to push and they were pushing those boundaries and someone born in this time would not have those same types of boundaries in fact it's almost like a uh, what's the opposite of a desert like a like a software oasis if you will yeah they they were like nowadays they wouldn't have been they wouldn't have had to think that way to think around it was almost like a detour in a road where they had to get around to get to where they wanted to be right this is something we can't do with the current technology that we have so either we don't do the thing or we find also a creative way to do the creative thing that we want to do within or working around the limitations that we have and on top of that too like you know for the uh for my next um material of music i'm going to be doing you know i mm -hmm. um whoever i send it to be mixed and mastered and produced with we can send these gargantuanly sized files through we transfer google drive whatever the heck you know and mm -hmm. just you know but whereas before tapes and CDs and floppy mm -hmm. disks, even or whatever, uh, there's the uh, you know, not trying to make the point as many times as we had here, but uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, to, to add to that, I guess I could say is that now that a anybody can do it, it's like, yay, anybody can do it, but also anybody can do it, which means sometimes there'll be less quality stuff that will seep through because anybody with a laptop can learn how to make garage band and think they're a musician all of a sudden. Well, the signal to noise ratio can arguably can be a lot lower these days compared to when people don't have access because of the nature of the technology of the time, or say, you know, back in the seventies or what have you, when queen was doing their recording. Um, the internet has been a hello the internet has been a very big um barrier breaker when it comes to uh access to the technology to be able to do those things hello sir How are you <laughs> my, doing? my father's photobombing the episode right now this is hello, mr connelly <laughs> nice is, to see is, you that is yours yes that is like What's it, what's it doing here then? Well, <laughs> I didn't have my laptop charger yesterday. If I had the answer to that question, <laughs> there, I'd sir, probably be you? richer. I don't know. <laughs> what's his name? Did you Dan. Say? This is Dan. Dan. Hello. I like the beard, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, I worked with someone last night. He works in the for fire the fire alarm, and he had a beard like you, but he trims it, and this is the hmm. first time I ever saw it. He says only on my birthday. So <laughs> that's fair. All right. Thank but you. every every time I see um Do you have do you have a question for Dan yes, while I you do. Are, while yes, you're I here do. related to the podcast? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, every time I see a guy who who trims his beard, shaves his mustache, is that what's her name? That's what I ask. 
What's her name? Oh, this may be getting cut out oh. of the. Uh, there is there is no name. I there would is say. no name. He says there is no oh, name. It's about this... a girl. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. Brought to you. Nice brought... to meet you, Mr. Connolly. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Please yeah. stand by. Yeah, we'll get that. <laughs> you <know? laughs> actually, you you should leave that in. That actually that, that, was, actually pretty that funny. would be good. Yeah, he'll keep that in <laughs> comic relief. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of oh, like that like. kind of boosted our kind of dull conversation there yeah. it wasn't dull what but it was gauze and synthesizers <laughs> and then all of a sudden hey what's up with the beard yeah. what's her name you know uh, <laughs> comic relief there mm -hmm. <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> that was good i'm keeping that in um <laughs> Is that um <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> recenter. You say recenter. Um, I think these days there is there should actually still be a a plateau with some of the technology. Like I feel like you can only go so far. There is the okay. cutting edge, but what's after that? You can only go so far. Well, I think we can ask the next generation of kids who will grow up in that environment to answer that question for us. And what they do with it might be awesome. We never we don't know that. Yeah. It's like the you think of the 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 genius and the simplicity. Mm. Mm -hmm. The I, I give examples to like, you know, you don't have to be a good musician, you have to have good songs. Yeah. You know. Uh the Ramones were not good musicians. I was just thinking of that. However, Good songs, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I was thinking of the remote. Not even, right? a, not even argumentative. Did. Not even yeah. arguable. Great songs, yeah. you know. Yeah, they were head boppers, and yeah. they had a message. Yeah, that's it. You know, and <laughs> you, you know, it's it's uh, even Tom Petty, who I'm not saying he wasn't a good musician, but he he wasn't like a virtuoso, mm -hmm. but what he did. And what he was able to do with his songs, people are still singing, like going into a break for the Florida Gators uh, commercial break. They're playing Tom Petty songs in the stadium. Mm. Huge, huge songs, you know? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what you'd think of this one, but, uh, you know, T-Pain, or you've heard of mm -hmm. T-Pain probably, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the so-called T-Pain effect. Uh, that kind of thing. The, the the auto tune warbled and compressed to death. Sure, and something <laughs> that something that I would say, at least for my ears, is not something I would go out of my way to listen to. If you or someone else likes it, more pari to you. But my point from that is, outside of the vocal warbling, auto tuning effect stuff. The guy can really sing really well. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. have have you heard him do the uh, Ozzy cover? That I haven't, I think, but I I've heard that... him sing some other things. On oh my gosh, at like but, a tiny desk or something concert. He, yeah, I think he did War Pigs. Okay, well, oh I can, my I gosh. can, I can, I can envision that. Yeah, and I think the only thing he really. He didn't put any like the effect or the pitch correction on his voice. I think he was like mm -hmm. singing it through a guitar amplifier. It kind of had that distorted okay. kind of, but that's merely just for probably in the mix, you know, but yeah. that's just stuff where kind of a bit of earthiness or crackling earthiness. Yeah. To... And it, that it, it was almost, you could hear the mic having that hiss behind it, you know? Sure. Sure. And it was great. I'll have to send mm -hmm. it to you at some point. You really mm -hmm. would like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Fast forwarding, I guess, is because um, I know we met however many years ago now at the Gulu Gulu Cafe in Salem, mm -hmm. the local open mic watering hole, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, I think and... Tiny the Bear at their concert a couple of Fridays ago referred to it as their stomping ground. <laughs> I'm like, I've yeah. been there before you guys, although I love you guys. You're cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that place. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a small stage, as you know. So it's, an, mm -hmm. you, you know, 
the 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 people are like you know one step away from you and it's just a little mm-hmm. little coffee shop you know mm-hmm. restaurant you know but there's something about small places like that that have their charm you know you can only reach people in a big place in a barricade that far away you really you, you have you almost have to be freddie mercury to translate in a big place like that you know mm. whereas almost not everybody but anybody who's learning how to do performance arts can really Mm -hmm. learn well in small places like that Mm. um i'd say that for certain types of music or performance gulu and other spaces similar to it can provide a challenge um Mm. for some that's a welcome thing um and sometimes it um, is difficult to hear a lot of spoken word. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it it seems, you know, it the space is suitable in terms of meeting folks, having a cup of coffee, light mm-hmm. jazz music. Yeah. Um, I've done synthy stuff before. I have no idea how it sounds out there because obviously I'm stuck on stage. Yeah, and you're doing it and you got the monitor there. So that's what you're hearing. Right, exactly. So I can't. I don't have a reference point, at least for what I'm doing. Um, but I, I will say, when when I all everything I've heard from what you do, it always sounds great. You know, I, I you you always uh, find a way to make it work, even on, mm. even in unfavorable conditions. I mean, must mm. say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I am, um, I'm glad the open mic is still running. I'm, I, I am too. There had been some stuff about them canceling friday saturday night music but they have still uh got events going which attach musicians and bands to those events awesome so like if you wanted to play there for like a market kind of thing and someone's bringing a market that you know and oh hey here's andy's bands we're gonna play some punk music for some (laughs) punk uh punk patches and jackets and things or yeah whatever. any number of those things i'm just know, off the top of my head oh uh, that's okay yeah I, I i try to be a uh, musician of all trades but it always winds up i always wind up playing the the punk stuff at, at gulu because mm-hmm. our friend cliff always winds up coming down with and oh sure and, and he'll always want to jump Jeez. up and say let's do this energy oh to have that at 65 i hope i do <laughs> uh same that's the same <laughs> Uh, I mean, st- standing up never mind jumping around <laughs> and he does he's yeah. like iggy pop he really he really reminds me of that that energy he's like mm-hmm. he's got that same thing you know mm-hmm. uh <laughs> for those of you who don't know click the link above you'll see what i mean <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> go see ss with... bats <laughs> <laughs> well maybe one of these days hasn't mm-hmm. it's been a minute but <laughs> Well, Andy, Andy needs to check out SS Bats. <laughs> I do. I know. I'm in. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, whoops, did I just say that? <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. One of these days. But um, you ever have a, uh, you probably have a nightmare gig you ever want to, sh- you want to share that sticks out of your mind? Like, oh, I need a, uh, I need a strawberry milkshake after that one to calm my nerves. <laughs> or that's um... what I, that's what I do. Just saying. I have a bad gig. I go to McDonald's and get a strawberry milkshake. Sure. There, there are a couple of gigs um, that I wouldn't necessarily call call nightmare. Absolutely, right. um, but one of them turned out to be weird yet fun and a learning experience. Okay, Fair despite enough. the situation that I found myself in while performing. Sure. So, and I wrote several paragraphs about about it at three in the morning the night of after coming back home sure uh it's probably i'll probably dig it up somewhere on facebook way back nice. when <laughs> so i think it was somewhere around like 2011 2012 and i was i had a couple of friends of mine who were in a duo at the time uh the three of us basically were in <clears throat> were in inquiring about playing an event somewhere on the boston harbor area in one of these sort of quasi-hebrid office slash performance spaces that might have been rented out by some uh, landlord who owned the building. I don't really know behind the bits behind it. 
I was just communicating with the event organizer over the two weeks up until the day of, and it was frustrating. And I, I can say that it was uh, her first time doing such a thing, so I will give her some leeway uh, because it's a learning experience for everyone. So the idea is, was kids coming out to have a good time or not kids literally in this case more like uh young adults and old term of endearment old. for the people um, that, for the audience you know yeah i guess i'm getting to that age anyway uh <laughs> so we're um so i'm communicating back and forth with the event organizer and uh i'm trying to figure out what's going on here you know do i need to bring at the time my own speakers and mixer uh because i had a car as well sure. do i need to you know what time am i going on how many bands are playing and through the course of the one or two weeks i was communicating with her until the day of um the number of bands that were going to be playing expanded tremendously such that oh initially it was going to be say starting seven or eight o'clock until midnight or past sure the number of bands that were added had everyone starting at two o'clock oh in the so afternoon. that's like basically boston calling that <laughs> for local various as in like time wise the just like it yes. starts and it goes for what yes. you know 10 so on hours so that's what i mean festival hours you know mm -hmm. yeah something something along those lines and it kept those kept on being added until the day of there was no like freeze point a week before that said okay this is the maximum number and i said okay up until the day of as well do you still need equipment like speakers and a mixer i have some i can toss in my car and they said would you be willing to bring them just in case or we have a guy and he doesn't show up and i thought i'm not going to wait have my car sitting out in the open with my mixer and speakers in the car you know because it, i realized the area we were going into it's not necessarily high crime, but I don't want to have my car broken into, stolen, whatnot. Say no more, I got you. <laughs> um, so I'm just thinking... I'm not going to name case. towns, but I feel like I know. <laughs> like, not worst case scenario, that kind Sorry. of stuff. No, it's okay. And um, so I get there at 2 o'clock, not having to bring my stuff, thankfully. Uh, my speaker is a mixer. Right go up a freight elevator into a combined office space which was court which was barriered off mm -hmm. to the quote unquote public space for the party event thing um and so i was originally scheduled to go up at 10 30 as i had seen before mm -hmm. by the time i got to the event area my friends had been pushed up to midnight and i had been pushed up to midnight 30. and then by the time they went on uh some of the kids or young adults had um, torn open a container or a plastic bag full of styrofoam peanuts <laughs> onto the dance floor <laughs> mind you the rest of the hallway back that was rented out had all, some like art gallery stuff and other things that were contributed by the people going there uh, um so it was like almost like a weird collab I mean, an interesting but weird collaborative event underneath this event organizer sure. and the end result for the duo musician friends and myself were that we were playing to the staff and the styro styrofoam peanuts on the floor wow. because all the younger folks who did not have cars i, I presume uh had to go leave early with the buses and whatnot um so it was a learning experience i took away from <laughs> yeah. that i wrote yeah. several paragraphs about it on fache book and um you know it's just the the baseline for that is or the takeaway from that ultimately is communication is important yes <laughs> most certainly in so many <clears throat> different so many different ways with respect to the bands respect mm. to the 
event at large with respect to the audience members and communicating amongst all three so everyone's on the same page as needs be so the event runs smoothly yes no well that's that's the well, whole that's thing. that's that's story time with dan there it is <laughs> <laughs> um i remember my uh speaking of ss bats we played a uh, show <laughs> a Sunday afternoon show at the Midway Cafe hmm. in Jamaica Plain on a okay. on like at like 3:30 in the afternoon so already it's hmm. it's kind of early early already it's kind of up in the air <laughs> mm-hmm. um and it was the same day as the Patriots playing the Denver Broncos was it 2016 it was like one of the AFC championships or something yeah. okay so one of those, so like everybody bailed to go see either right. watch, you know, on TV or whatever the heck. It was like late January. So coming up on the time, you know, for if they sure. I think I think they won the Super Bowl that year. I think I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But anyhow, um it's like the the bar staff, two or three people, and then like the bands. That was us. Mm-hmm. That was our but you know what? We still did it. And I just remember we did this crazy thing. We're playing and and mm-hmm. then I, we've, we all finished, and then it was like dead silence. And then our singer was just like, "What's the score?" <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! It was one of those. And how, like, how did the audience react to that? Uh, well, they all just kind of looked at the TV, like, "Oh, it's oh. this now." Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay, let's do another one. And then, mm. like, after two songs later, what is it now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just the cringe. Yeah. Oh, was, but yeah. we did it. We mm-hmm. did it, and we we yep. pl- played it like it was still a packed place. But you know, mm. no fault of the venue or anything. It was just uh, just bad circumstances. You know. Mm-hmm. I remember I jumped off the stage a bunch of times that night, and I hit my head on the disco ball that night. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, that didn't pan out too well either. The disco ball is supposed to be on the ceiling, not the floor. <laughs> this is true. Uh, well, it was like a it was like a five foot tall stage too, mm. and I went and I did a full whilst you know everything right there. You really launched yourself up then. Oh yeah, <laughs> mm. I don't know how I didn't hit it multiple times, but maybe I did and I forgot. <laughs> but, <laughs> let's 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 leave that one alone. <laughs> It's supposed to be concussions, not fun cushions. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we right, made Dan. it. We did. Hey, thank you so much, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. For more of my original content, visit my website www.andyconley.com.